Hi, my name is Phil Rupp from Pico Automotive. I'm one of the automotive support engineers. So today we're going to talk about cam and crank synchronisation. So we're going to be running the software in Pico 7 and we're going to be showing you um, some little things within the software and how to connect. Here we have the 4425A. So we've got our BNC connectors, channel A on the camshaft sensor, channel B on the crankshaft sensor. Um, we're going to show you exactly how we've connected into the cam and the crankshaft sensor using our earthing strap on the engine as a good point. So we can use a guided test and you will all be aware of the guided tests. I appreciate that some of you may not like guided tests, but the guided test is there to help you if you want. Right, what we're going to do is initially we're going to start up the car and talk through the settings that we've got on the screen. So if you just bear with me. So we're going to start the software up. Okay, now initially if I would have used my standard software that I've got um, within the, the software ranges I would have got some real issues. If you look here you will see that I've got a red warning of over voltage in channel um, B so I'm going to have to do that and that gets rid of the over voltage. Now if I'd actually gone down to 20 volts, again I would have exactly the same issue on channel A but I've got over voltage so there are times when interference from components may affect what you're seeing so you may actually have to change the voltage on the screen so let's stop the software for a minute um, I'm just going to turn the engine off so that we can see exactly what's happening and um, So, there are occasions within the software that you are going to have to change the voltages because of interference, which is what we've shown you, the over voltage symbol that we've got, um, and we may also have to change the time scale across the screen to get more captures. Now, we can effectively go to any of these points on the screen and we can measure one point to another. Now, we can also zoom in to any part of our screen. So what we're now doing is we're looking at a particular point in time. Let's move this out of the way. So if we had a issue with the timing belt, we could actually just move this out of the way again. We could lock our rulers by doing this and then looking across the screen at more packets of data to see what we've got. And we can move the data back and we can then check to see if at any point our cam and crank signal went out of synchronization. Now this is very important. When we think that we have a problem with cam and crank, a timing belt chain, uh, stretching, we can then look at two points on the screen and we can actually then see whether or not we've got a problem. Now there's a really good case study on a Volkswagen Polo where you can see this happening and you're then going to go, what are these big tall spikes that you've got on the screen? So these tall spikes that we have here are actually ignition patterns. Let's just uh, take those off. You can see that we are picking up an ignition pattern on both the cam and the crank sensor. So you can see exactly what. Remember, when you look at the engine, the engine is open 
we've got lots of wires, we've got lots of interference from the lights above and we've got interference from all the wiring looms on the screen. So this is where we're going to pick up signals sometimes from other places. Now let's go back. So this is not unusual. We can also overlay signals on top of each other to see how they work and again we can bring them down and look and see as we have with the rulers we can go from any point on the screen on a good point from there to there and see exactly our measurements and our time what's happening so save the waveform look at the information on the screen go onto the waveform library download a comparison and see what there is so it's all about looking at the software setting you may have to change the voltage if you've got interference remember we can filter things on the screen but we don't want to take out the interference because sometimes that can actually show us other things happening. So what we could do here is we could actually put the coil on plug probe onto number one cylinder and we would probably then get the firing order of our engine. So as you've seen on the screen here, cam crank synchronization very important, waveform library to compare and see. Um, and also look at the information on the screen that is there that may be interference like we have here. We've got an ignition pattern to see what happens. This is just a quick introduction to um, changing cam and crank synchronization, looking at how you may have to change the voltage scales because of interference and looking at interference on the engine that you may pick up because of the wiring looms and the whole engine um, characteristics that we can pick up information. We can filter things, we can do all sorts of things, but we just want to look at cam, crank, um, synchronization and interference. But we can also then save the waveform and go to vehicle details. Here we populated all of our drop down menus with our information so we're going to save we can then also save this um, or open it again and as you see on the screen here we have the same one we can bring it back and see what's happening so a lot of information on cam crank synchronization zooming in interference changing the voltage range um, to meet your screen um, ability and also um, looking at lots of things on the screen and comparing what we have. We can move the waveforms up and down. Hope that you found this video helpful to show you cam and crank signals together, interference, saving a waveform, um, and then also look at the case studies that we've got on the website to learn more and more. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.